Okay. Excellent. So, um, thank you for coming to Power Yoga this evening. I thought we'd start by sitting down because we've had a week off. So, seems only fair we um, start by taking it a little bit easier. So, if you come into a comfortable sitting position, we'll start with the head and the neck. Just gently bring your arms out so your fingertips are just off the floor, palms facing forward, slightly open. Draw the chin in slightly lengthening the back of the neck and without looking down or up just drop your right ear to your right shoulder and feel that left arm um, reaching and stretching away increasing the stretch through those neck muscles just becoming aware of the breath as well helping you let go of the day come into the moment and then gently come back up, going the opposite way. And again, breathing in as you come up. So we're going to link hold of the elbows behind the back, holding the opposite elbow with the opposite hand. Again, draw the chin into the throat so the back of the neck is nice and long, and then rotate it all the way around to the left. Again, trying not to look up or down, just rotating the head. Again. As you exhale, just un release, unravel, and go round to the opposite side, keeping the shoulders pulling back, the chest open. Being aware of your breath. And again, releasing as we unravel that. Release the arms, bring the hands onto the shoulders, just mobilising the shoulders, warming up those rotator cuffs. And then rotating the opposite way. And relaxing. So just linking the hands. So you're making a big circle with your arms, your elbows around, hands about chest height. Feel like your waistline is being pulled back and your arms are being pulled forwards. So you've got Udiana Banda happening, navel pulling back to the spine, the back of your shoulder blades are pulling in opposite directions. It's called a triple heater macaho stretch. The big focus of the Shaolin monks is to strengthen their triple heater energy, their protective energy. Just opening up those shoulder blades, drawing Udi and the Banda in, activating your core. And then gently releasing, pushing the palms up to the ceiling. Again, opening up the chest and the shoulders. Really trying to straighten those elbows as much as you can. Bring the hands behind the head, pull the elbows back as you exhale, right elbow to right knee. Thinking about the breath, making the in-breath and out-breath nice and long, nice and deep. Inhaling to come up, elbows pulling back, left elbow to left knee, right elbow lifting up, opening up the chest.
And again, inhaling to come up, pushing those palms back up to the ceiling. And then bring the backs of the hands onto the floor and try and bring your head down into the palms of your hands, just folding forwards as deeply as you can go. Don't worry if your head doesn't quite reach your hands, the floor might be quite low where you are. And then inhaling to come back up. So we're going to release the legs, give them a little shake. And we're going to start to warm up the hips. We're going to bring this left foot up, take the left arm under the calf and hold the ankle. And you can swing the hip round a little bit, just to get some gentle rocking happening in your hips, warming up your hips. And if you find this is okay, then place the left foot into the right elbow and then bring the left elbow round the knee. So now you're cradling it as if rocking a baby. And then again, start moving and rocking. You're trying to get your foot about as high as your knee. You can get it to about that angle. We're doing really good. And then gently pick up the foot with both hands above the ankle and just shake out the feet, releasing the ankle, shaking out the ankle. Hopefully your foot's wobbling rather than moving like a piece of wood. Nice and loose and free. And then bring that leg all the way across so that you're relaxing it down onto your right knee, trying to get that knee nice and low. So it's going to bring in a nice deep forward bend, stretch up as you exhale, reach for that right foot, holding the toes or the shins, the ankle, taking that deep hamstring stretch. Take a few breaths here, warming up the hamstrings, lengthening out. And then gently breathing, come back up. Relax the leg back out. So opposite leg, again, take your right hand under the calf to hold the ankle. Just start with some gentle rocking. And if that's okay, gently bring the foot into the opposite elbow, wrap the other arm around the knee. Trying to lift that foot about as high as your knee. And then gently taking hold of the ankle, shaking out the foot. And then bringing the leg all the way across. So this is half eagle pose, garden asana, knee pushing down to keep the right leg, left leg straight. Deep breath in, Uddiyana Bandha pulling back, exhaling, reaching forwards. Working with your breath. Couple more breaths into the kidneys in the small of the back. Back passive and giving as you reach forwards, front active, pulling you forwards. And then let go. Unfold your legs, give them a shake. So just to demo one thing before we get going, which we're going to bring into a sequence. You're going to be in downward dog and we're going to come into a three-pointed plank. So we're going to bring the knee up and then we're going to bring the foot so it comes off your mat. It's about level with your hip and the foot's pointing out sideways. The opposite hand will come into the middle of your mat. 
and you're going to drop onto the outside edge of that straight leg and foot so that you can do a side plank with an extra little bit of support. Okay, and then come back, step back, and we'll do it the opposite side. So that's something we're going to do in our sequence. So we're going to rock forwards onto our hands and knees. Just a couple of rounds of cat cow. So have your knees under your hips, feet behind your knees, shoulders over your hands, arms nice and straight. Exhale, curl your head and tailbone towards each other, but really feel those hands pushing into the floor. Feel those shoulder blades active. As you inhale, look up, arching the spine. Exhaling, pushing the hands into the earth. Curling the head and tailbone together. Inhaling, looking up. One more time, exhaling. So we've got opposite stretching across. Oh, some of you have frozen. So hopefully you can hear me now. Right leg out, left arm out, stretching out across. Really feel your core active. And then as you bend your right knee behind you, reach back to hold your left foot. Feel your quad stretching out. and then release and swap sides. So left leg, right arm, reaching out, stretching out, core active, nice and strong. And then gently reaching back, bending the knee behind you, taking hold of your foot and turn your head to look over your shoulder. And again, release, come back onto all fours. So if you curl up onto tiptoes and just lift your knees an inch off the floor, really push your hands into the earth, feel Udiana Banda happening. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, three, two, one, and come back down. So second set, lifting the knees just an inch off the floor. And then if you can bring your left knee up to your chest more, if this puts too much pressure on your right knee, then just hold both knees up where they are. If you can, Hold it there and then rest again. When so second side, lifting the knees just off the floor, bringing the right knee up to the chest, holding it. But if it puts too much pressure on the opposite knee, just have both knees off the mat. Hold it and relax. Excellent. Pull back, extended child's pose, stretch those arms out. Forehead on the floor, shoulders active. And then gently roll up into your downward facing dog. So first downward dog of the evening, pedal out those heels, lengthen out the calves. Take your time to really push the heel down towards the floor. Try and have the arms straight, the chest pushing towards the knees, the chin tucked into the collarbones.
and then come to neutral, come forwards into your plank, hold your plank nice and strong, have the elbows rotating to point behind you, so as you bend the elbows, the triceps are doing the work, you gently come down. So we'll do three baby cobras, breathe in, lift up, lift that chest up, let the lower back do the work, and then exhale to come down. Inhale to come up, maybe hands off the floor this time so your back is doing the work. Exhale to come down. Third one, inhaling, lifting up, hands off the floor, legs off the floor. Back doing the work. Exhaling, coming down. So coming up through high cobra, breathe in, lift up. Just opening up the chest, keeping the shoulders low, neck long. We're going to pull back the hips all the way back, curl up into downward dog again. So this time, lift your left leg up off the floor. Have the left leg straight, as straight as you can, but lift it as high as you can. And then bring your shoulders back over your hands so you're in your plank, but on one leg. Bend the elbows, lower the chest, hips to come down, leg comes down at the very end. Breathe in, high cobra. Exhale, pull back, downward facing dog. Right leg coming up, keep the leg straight, lift it as high as you can. Draw the shoulders over the hands, one-legged plank. Lower the chest, nice and slow. Whole body touching the floor at the same time and then the leg comes down. Breathe in, high cobra. We'll do one more round each side, pull back, downward dog. So you lift that left leg high, keep the leg straight. Shoulders coming over the hands, elbows bending, lowering down. Inhaling high cobra. Exhaling, downward dog. Lifting that leg high. Coming forwards. Bending the elbow so you lower through Chaturanga Dandasana. Breathe in, high cobra. And gently pull back, downward dog. So I'm going to breathe in and lift the right leg up high, curl the knee up to the chest, and then scoop that foot all the way through between your hands. Okay. Gently try and straighten your right leg, walk your hands back as far as you need to, Push your left heel down to the floor so that you've got both legs are straight and your left heel is trying to push down to the floor. Big stretch in your right hamstrings. Push that heel down. Straighten that right leg. And then bend the right knee again. Rest your chest on your thigh. Lift your arms up. Lift your chest up. Keep your weight on that front leg. Keep the knee over the ankle. Stretch the arms up. Bring the hands to prayer. Twist to the right. Breathe in, come back up. 
Keep your weight on your front leg, lean back. Exhale, lower down. Step your right foot back, downward facing dog. Hold your dog, push your heels down. Breathe. Lift that left leg high, leg straight. Then bring the knee to the chest, draw the knee to the chin, scoop the foot up between the hands. Okay, so you're going to straighten your left leg, you're going to walk your hands back, your right leg's going to straighten, the heel's going to push down to the floor, it's probably not going to get to the floor. You're getting a strong stretch in those hamstrings. Again, bend the left knee, rest the chest on the torso, onto the thigh, lift the arms up, lift the chest up. Hands to prayer, twist to the left. Breathing, come back up. So we've still got the weight on the front leg. We're going to lean back. And then exhale, lower down. Step back down with dog. So we're going to do a flip into a wild thing variation. Lift your left leg up high, bend the knee. Twist the knee up to the ceiling. <clears throat> so keep the twist and straighten the leg. Point the toes up as if you're a ballet dancer, lengthening through those lovely quad muscles. Really stretch that leg up, but keep the twist. And then bend the knee again. This time, let the foot come all the way down behind you. Flip over, push the hips up. Stretch that left arm up and then flip back over down with dog. So again, find your down with dog. Lift the right leg up, bend the knee, twist the knee up to the ceiling and then stretch the leg up, lengthen through the quads and then bend the knee again. This time, let it drop behind you. Push up, wild thing. And flip back, down with dog. Gently bring your left leg up. Bring your left knee over to your left elbow. Left knee next to your left elbow, hover there. Take it over to your right elbow, down towards the wrist, but don't let it touch the floor, back over to the left wrist, and then drop it behind your wrist. So pigeon pose, see if you can flip the foot across, keeping your knee behind your wrist. Slide your right hip back, walk the hands up, lift the chest, Lift up into your pigeon pose. Open up your chest. Keep your shoulders low. Neck long. Take a few breaths here. Feel the lower back working. Feel the hips opening up. So we're going to bend the right knee and we're going to reach back with the left hand, see if we can hold the foot behind you. Keep the chest open. 
stretching out those quads. Nice bend in the back, groin opening up. And then relax the hand, swap hands. Again, try and pull that heel towards your bottom, basically, towards your glutes. And again, bring both hands down. So relax the leg and then see if you can drop that right hip right onto your left heel. If you can rest your head on a fist, rest your head on a fist. You can rest your head on the floor, rest on the floor. You can stretch your arms out. You bring all your body weight down onto the groin, opening up your hips. But try not to let your hips rock out of alignment. Try and keep the hips in alignment. So you don't want your left buttock coming down towards the floor. You want that right hip to rest on your left heel. So everything's in good alignment. Opening up those hips. And then gently walk your hands back up, lift yourself up. So you're going to drop onto your left bottom hip, swing your right foot round over your left knee. And then you're going to twist all the way around to the right. Right hand round your waistline, left arm wrapping around your shin hugging your shin to your body, drawing it in, feeling that big twist in the spine. Feeling the glutes opening up, hygiene. When you breathe in here, really become aware of that second part of your breath, that breath retention, holding the in-breath, making the ribcage expand. So as you breathe out, you then twist even deeper. Breathing in. Breathing out. So when you're ready, we're gonna take hold of the right foot with the left hand and stretch it up into the air. So if you can hold the outside edge of your foot, bring your right hand round behind your back, stretch it out, turn, big twist. And then bring that right hand round to hold the opposite edge of your foot. Stretch the leg high, open up the hamstrings, opening up the back of the knee. And then let go of the foot. Use your core, keep it strong, keep it stretched up into the air. And then we're going to swing that leg all the way back round and flip back up into our original pigeon pose. So we lift the right knee off the floor and we lift the left foot and heel off the floor and hover you all your core and then stretch the leg up into the air and bring it down. Find your downward dog. So bring the right leg up high and then bring the right knee over to the right elbow. Bring the right knee down towards the right wrist, but keep it hovering off the floor, knee and foot. Over to the left wrist, back up, back across, and then bring it down behind the wrist. So you end up with your right knee down next to your right hand and you flick the foot over to your left and you slide your left hip back, trying to drop your left hip onto your right heel. Walk your hands up, lift your chest up, open up your heart. 
the chest for that gentle lower back bend and breathe. A few breaths here. We can make it deeper by reaching back with the right hand to hold the left foot, looking over your right shoulder. You can stay in your normal pigeon pose, whatever feels good, whatever feels right. And swap sides, taking hold of the left foot with the left hand. On this one, you might feel that you can draw the heel closer to your buttocks, really lengthening out your quads or maintaining that nice open chest and back bend. And then release the foot. So here we lie, rest down, really dropping that left hip onto the heel. You can rest your head on your fists on the floor. Maybe you can completely stretch the arms out and just breathe into that deep twist. But remember, you're trying to keep your hips level. Be have that body awareness that you know you're not rotating too much in the lower back and the hips. The right buttocks are low to the floor and the left hip is on the heel. And then gently walk yourself back up. So this is where we're going to come into that three-pointed plank in a minute that I demoed at the beginning. So lift your left knee up off the floor, lift your right knee and hit foot off the floor, hover, use your core, bring the leg up into the air, step it down, downward facing dog. Okay, so let's bring that left knee up and foot off the floor and bring that foot off the side of your mat, foot pointing sideways. It's about level with your hip. Right hand can come more into the middle of your mat. Right foot drops onto the outside edge and you stretch that left arm up. Now, as you stretch that left arm up, really lift those hips high, push the hips to high. Use that left foot to push into the floor as you lift those hips. And then lower your hips to the floor. Keep your arms straight, feel the stretch in your side, and then push back up. One more time, nice straight line, just lower your hip bone to the floor. and then lift back up. Bring the left hand down, step that downward dog. So bring the right foot and knee up, placing the right foot off the side of your mat, level with your right hip. Left hand into the middle of your mat. Drop onto the outside edge of your left foot, stretch that right arm up, push the hips as high as you can get them. This is strengthening all of those spinal muscles that wrap along the length of your spine. So lower the hip to the floor, feel that big stretch in your lats and side of your waistline. And then push the hips back up.
Oh, everyone's frozen again. I'm going to wait till the system catches up. This could be a chance to have a breather. Oh, I've lost you all. Sorry, everyone, I can't see you at the moment. I'm just waiting for my system to reboot. Which it's not. I do believe you're all online. We're here, Rex, we can hear you. Okay. Right, well, I'm going to carry on and then hopefully my system will catch up. Yeah, we and can I'll hear and see. see you. Oh, you've gone now. Is everyone with me now? Good, so if you'd like to come into Downward Dog, push the hips back, push the heels to the floor. So we're gonna do five swan dives. So you're gonna bring your chest, scoop it along the floor and lift up high cobra. One, pull back Downward Dog, scoop along the floor. Third one. Fourth one. And fifth one. And push back down the dog. Lift your left leg high, bend the knee, bring the knee over to your right elbow and stretch the leg out. Don't let the foot touch the floor and then drop the foot on the floor. Left hand into the middle of your mat, right arm up in the air. Push up and then sit down on your bottom. Link your hands behind your head. Bring your right elbow down onto your right leg. Excellent. Breathe here. If you can, reach out to hold your right foot with your right hand. Stretch your left arm over your head. And come back up. Bring the hands behind the head, this time left elbow to left knee, left thigh. Again, if you can reach out and hold your left foot with your left hand, you can. And if you can stretch your right arm over your head, stretch out. and come back. Excellent. So we're going to twist all the way around to the left so the hands come back onto the mat the way we came. This is going to be a big stretch in your iliotibial track, I warn you now. If you get sciatica, maybe miss this last bit out. Lift your hips back off the floor. Okay, now bend your elbows and lower your whole body down and lay on your leg. Reaching it out, feel that stretch in your iliotibial tract, and then push back up. Step back down the dog. Opposite side, lift the right leg up, right knee to left elbow. 
stretch the leg out and then drop the foot onto the floor. Step the right hand in, left arm up in the air. Push those hips up. When you exhale, bring your bottom down to the floor and just reach forwards to hold your feet or your shins, your ankles. A couple more breaths. And then gently release. So we're going to twist again all the way to the right. And we're going to lift those hips up. I've just realized we missed out a spinal twist on the other side, didn't we? You didn't tell me. We'll add it now. So again, lower yourself down. See if you can bring your whole weight, chest down onto the floor. Feel that stretch down your iliotibial tract. And then push back up. Step back into your downward dog. So forearm drops, you're in downward dog, drop your elbows to the floor, bring your shoulders forwards, come back up. Push back into downward dog. Drop your elbows to the floor, bring the shoulders forwards, hop back up. Do three more, push back into downward dog, Drop the elbows, bring the chest forwards, pop back up. Excellent. Last one. And back into downward dog. So we're going to add that spinal twist I missed out. I do apologise. Bring your right knee forwards behind your wrist, flick the foot across and drop your hip to the floor. Sweep the leg all the way round and twist all the way round to your left, hugging the knee with your right elbow. Bring that twist in. So again, as you take that deep breath in, hold your breath, resonate it through the chest. As you exhale, twist deeper. Janine, you're twisting the opposite way to everyone else, so you know you're doing that. That's all right. Good. So another couple of breaths here. And then with your right hand, take hold of the outside edge of your left foot. Lift the leg up. Try and bring your left arm round behind you. Track it as it tracks round with the head to encourage that twist. Good. 
and then bring the hand all the way around, holding the foot with both hands, lengthening out through the back of that knee. and then release. Hold the leg in the air, use your core. And then we're gonna sweep the leg round and roll back up onto our hands. We lift the left knee off the floor, lift the right knee and foot high, kick the leg into the air, step down. So gently bend the knees, look forward, snow hop into the middle of your mats, balancing on tiptoes, bringing your hands to prayer. Lovely. Okay, so it's that time of the evening where we pay homage to the crow. So we'll start with traditional crow. Open out the knees hands firmly planted on the floor. So we're going here with the knees pushing against the triceps, lift up onto your haunches, look forwards, lift the feet off the floor. Really feel yourself almost trying to push so hard that it's like you're trying to lift your knees off your triceps as if you're gonna float all the way up, really push up as you hold it. And then when you need to come down, come down. Scoop the knees back together. So twist to the left. Palms on the floor. So you've got your left knee against your right tricep. Your left foot is going to go over your right ankle and you come up so that if you want to stretch your legs out, you can. Very nice, Mr. Gibson. Take your time. Play with it. Do both sides in your own time. Nearly, Jane. It's all about how far you twist and where you plant your hands to get it comfortable. Excellent. Okay. So has everyone had a good go at that? I think they have. Which gives us plenty of time to do our wall handstands and possibly our L-shaped wall handstands as well. So shall we do L-shaped wall handstands first? Come to your wall and put your feet against the wall so that you know where your hips come to, and this is where you want your hands. And then we're gonna turn around and place our hands about there. When we bring our feet up onto the wall, we can start nice and high. And then we're gonna slide the legs down the wall until we're L-shaped and then hold it for as long as you feel comfortable to. So take your time to play. I think your hands might be a bit too close to the wall, Janine. Bring them a bit further forwards. Nice, Vanessa. So look behind you, Vanessa. Oh, nearly. Excellent. 
Excellent. And then when you've done your L shape, just have a go at a normal wall handstand where you lift one leg off the wall and hold it for a count of five and then swap legs, count to five. And then walk back down. So we're really getting the upper body working. Really try and keep those arms straight. Shoulder width apart. That's it. Bring one leg up off the wall. Good. And then try and swap. And when you've done both legs, come back into Sukhanasana where we started. Lovely. So from our sitting Sukhanasana position, we're just going to take our time to come down onto our hands, come down onto our elbows, come all the way down, stretch the arms out behind us, palms together, really bring the palms together, have the wrists, touching from the ball of the thumbs to the ball of the little toe, little toe, little finger, of the fingertips touching. It symbolizes the left and right side of the brain in balance, the yin and the yang, the male, the female, coming to tau, all things are one. Knees dropping out to the side, navel pulling back to the spine. Gently slide the soles of your feet together, giving more space for the hips to rock out, the knees to drop down towards the floor, the navel pulling towards the spine. From here, you can really feel the pelvic floor muscles pulling up as you contract Mulabanda, drawing that downward flowing energy up Apana moving up, contract those pelvic floor muscles, work those muscles, become aware of those muscles. And then gently slide the feet down the floor, down your mat until they gently peel apart at the last point. Relax your arms by your sides, palms facing up. Find your Shavasana. So find that bindi point. It's halfway between the back of your skull and the crown of your head. That point on the back of the skull, halfway up from the base of the skull to the crown of the head. And as you find that point, imagine breathing into that point like your breath is a ray of light traveling through that point into the middle of your skull. And then as you exhale, imagining it flowing out through the front of your forehead, out between the eyebrows of the third eye chakra. So we want to breathe into this point for a couple of minutes, breathing out through the third eye, activating the pineal gland that rests in the middle of the brain, the middle of the skull, behind the sinuses. Imagining your breath as a ray of light to the best of your ability. Breathing into that point.
And then just bring your breathing to rest in its own pattern. Just spend one more minute resting in the stillness. In your own time, give your knees a hug, have a gentle rock from side to side before rolling back up to sitting. <laughs> 